Did you know that everything in the air, everything you eat, and everything you drink goes through your liver first? Well, coming up next on The Holistic Half, we're going to learn why the liver is so important and what you can do to help take care of it. Stay tuned. Welcome to this edition of The Holistic Half, and joining me in the studio today is Karen Miller-Yost from the Cleansing Ministries Rejuvenation Spa, and I've been working with Karen for the last seven weeks cleansing my liver. And so we're going to start today's program by the one thing that convinced me that I needed to cleanse my liver, and that is why the liver is so important. And Karen, thank you for joining us to help educate everyone today. Oh, it's great to be here. So, why is the liver so important? The liver is like the major control unit of your whole body. Just like in a city, there are major centers that control all the water and the sewer and the lights. And if that center that provides us all of our water, sewer, and lights went out, then we'd all be in a big mess because mm -hmm. that controls everything that we live on. Well, your liver is just the same in your body because everything that goes into your body goes to your liver first. Even things, chemicals you put on your skin mm -hmm. go right to the liver and the liver has to detox you from that. Any uh, pharmaceutical or recreational drugs mm -hmm. um, make a bigger toxic burden on your liver. So it's not just like a, I used to think, oh, you, got, you can't drink too much. So I used to drink a lot of wine and, you know, you're in your 20s. That's what you did. That's right. And you always kind of had in the back of the mind, oh, be careful of the liver. But it's not just alcohol. It's the toxins in the food that you eat and just from the atmosphere everything goes through the liver first? Everything goes through the liver first. And a lot of people think, well, I don't live in a big city. I'm not around all the smog. I'm not around that many toxins, and they live in the country. Mm -hmm. But then there's the crop dusters that are spraying all the sprays. Mm -hmm. There's the chemtrails. There's the trade winds from China dumping toxins yeah. in the rain. And then there's chlorine in the water. There's chlorine and fluorine, yeah kill bacteria. To kill, and strengthen your teeth, but it's killing you. It's all going to the liver, and the liver is the first place it goes, and when the liver gets congested, nothing flows, and your digestion doesn't work, and your enzymes don't work, and you can't break down the chemicals to use them properly mm -hmm. after a while. So what if you did have an excess of toxins in your liver, are there signs? Like, because I didn't have any signs. I didn't really know that I even had toxins in my liver until my best friend, she started cleansing, and then she was, like, showing me stones and this and that. I was like, what? Not understanding that everything that we, it doesn't just filter it. As it filters it, it stores. Correct? Correct. The liver stores um, glucose for your blood, but when it gets congested, the toxins stay in your liver, mm -hmm. and it can't, it can't move them out through the bile. It can't release them into the bile if the bile isn't flowing because you're too toxic. Mm -hmm. And that's where the stones start forming because the, it, it's so toxic and so locked up in the biliary tree in your liver that the stones start forming. Mm -hmm. And when you're younger, you don't notice it because when it first starts thickening and getting toxic, mm -hmm. you don't notice it and you're young enough. But by the time you're 40 years old, or sometimes even 30 years old, if you've led a really toxic life, mm -hmm. um, your energy legs, and you can't, you wake up at three every morning because that's when your liver time is. Really? Do you that's know that's right. so bizarre? I didn't even know that. And I used to wake up at 3 o'clock 
every I thought it was bizarre. I would write it down too all the times I'd wake up at three. That's your liver talking. It's saying I'm toxic and you're not taking good care of me. Yeah, that's interesting. So very interesting. Those are some of the signs that happen that people don't realize their mm -hmm. their liver saying, I'm congested, the system's gonna start shutting down. And so as the liver gets congested, then the kidneys stop working, the lymph starts working. Um, Did you say back pain too? You is get one of the back signs? pain on the right side, mm -hmm. usually the gallbladder is right above the waist on the right side, mm -hmm. right next to the spine. Um, lots of times, like somebody said, well, to, even today, one lady when I was doing a colim on her and mm -hmm. massaging her, she says, "What? Why is it sore there?" And I says, "Well, your gallbladder is congested, mm -hmm. and it's inflamed." And she says, "Well, I never noticed it hurt before." I says, "Well, did you get a pain right back here mm -hmm. in your back?" And she says, "Yeah." And, and that's, see, that's a sign, but we don't know these things. People aren't educated yeah. about that. And I remember too when I lived in Idaho years ago. I was in college, and I had the yellowest skin. It was, I blamed it on, I had dyed my hair black at the time, but now thinking back, that was a party time for me. That's right. And that might have been a telltale sign and So as that's well. the belly rubin that mm -hmm. the liver's not flushing out, and it can make you have yellow skin and yellow eyes. Wow. One of my clients came to me, and he thought he was dying. His eyes were just so yellow, and um, it took, um, about a ten day, ten days of doing Kalimas to get the yellow out of his wow. eyes and, and a couple liver flushes. Now, just for those of you that don't know what Kalimas are, they are basically a flush, all oxygenated water that just cleans out your lower intestine or large intestine. I'm not. Well, mostly it cleans the large intestine, but right. the small intestine also moves debris down, mm -hmm. even from the liver. You can get things from the liver in, in a colon hydrotherapy session. Right. So we'll talk so about... the whole thing moves We'll out. talk about all the ways of cleansing the liver later on in the program. So now, what are some of the things, like the liver connects to the gallbladder, connects to the kidneys. So does it, once it stores the toxins, how do you go in there and say, okay, we're going to try to cleanse this out so it can reset? Because I think that's what's the hardest thing to translate is why it's so important for your health to actually do these things and take care of your liver. Well, once the liver is toxic and the kidney is toxic, you need to do some of the simple things you can do is stay hydrated mm -hmm. by drinking at least eight cups of water a day. Mm -hmm. um, and is there any certain waters that you should drink? Because I know <laughs> if you drink water from the top lots of time, there's that's right chemicals in those. So you need to make sure that you're drinking purified water, mineral <laughs> water. You need to be getting lots of ionic minerals. And even if you can get alkaline water or e-water, mm -hmm. there's different places in town that carry those. The different types of water. Those different kinds of water. System. Or get a good filter at mm -hmm. your house. Nice. And so that helps a lot. And, and you can start making um, like kidney teas and liver teas. And that mm -hmm. uses herbs to help purifying the liver and the kidneys. Mm -hmm. And did you have issues with, like what led you to start doing the research so you started to learn all the information about the liver and about cleansing the liver? Well, about 10 years ago, about, no, let's see, 20, 30 years ago, <laughs> I moved. Time flies. <laughs> I moved to Oregon on top of a mountain where I thought was pure and had pure well water. Mm -hmm. And I didn't um, realize there was arsenic and liver flukes. Now, where in the world would arsenic, like if you're in Oregon, where would that even come from? I mean, no, it's um, natural, Arsenic but... is in ground and is actually in most of the water in the United States, in most of the groundwater in the United States. It's a natural element that's in the ground. Mm -hmm. 
and the water people don't check for that hmm. and they the public is unaware of arsenic and arsenic is a heavy metal that doesn't leave your body unless you do something to make it leave to make it leave mm -hmm. and then liver fluke what what is liver fluke I've not well, familiar. somebody before I moved to Oregon mm -hmm. had raised pigs, and pigs are known to have a lot of liver flukes. A fluke is like a worm, oh. but it's, it's more like a sucker, and they're usually shaped. And you know, they just kind of hang out in your liver. And they just suck the life out of you. <laughs> but you were able to cleanse yourself. Right, and so my whole body stopped flowing. Mm -hmm. completely and I wasn't even able to have a bowel movement and my tissues were all turning to stone from all those toxins mm -hmm. even though I was eating fish and vegetables and you thought you were being and really I thought healthy. I was being healthy um, because there was toxins in that mm -hmm. my system shut down wow. and turned to stone and it was only. And I don't. When you say turn to stone, it's just things actually hardened in your system. That's correct. Wow. They it hardened in um, the countries where they grow these foods for us, and the, they spray all the crops with mm. the pesticides and herbicides in all the other countries other than America. Mm -hmm. The children are even getting what they call a stone disease where their their bodies are turning to stone. They're, because they're so toxified they their bodies are turning to stone. It's amazing. And it's really sad. Mm. Well so I was led to doing liver flushes mm -hmm. and the more I cleaned my liver the less stones I had all over my body. Right. And I learned which foods So when dissolved. did you start? So about 10 years ago, I did my first liver flush. Wow. And at that time, I thought you only had to do one and you were fixed. Mm -hmm. And I learned that that didn't work that way. Mm -hmm. When you're full of stones, you just, it, one doesn't do it. Right. And so I did like one a year or so until five years ago. And I went to a bioenergetic college. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that, they said to do it once a week wow. for 12 weeks. So I started doing that about two years ago, two summers ago. Mm -hmm. And after that, I did like one liver flush a month. Wow. Well, when we come back, Karen's going to teach us a few tricks that we can do to take care of our livers. Stay tuned. And joining me in the studios is Karen Miller-Yost of the Cleansing Ministry Rejuvenation Center. And she's going to show us the easy things we can do to support our livers. Karen, what's the easiest, if there was one thing that I could do, and I don't have time and I'm on the go all the time, what's the one thing that I can start doing to help take care of my liver that I tortured for so many years? <laughs> Well, one of the easiest things is to take this lemon mm -hmm. and squeeze it in a glass of water. Is it cold water or warm water? Room temperature is best. Okay. A whole half? Mm -hmm. I get the seeds out usually now. And that's it. And no. that's it. Yeah? And then just drink away. So every morning instead of coffee, this should be your routine. Just yes, lemon this is water. A, a little sunshine in the morning. Excellent. To get you going. Yay. Okay, and then there's foods too that support the liver that I didn't know about until just discussing with you. So if we can kind of share with people some of the foods that help to cleanse the liver as well. Well, I encourage people to put cilantro in their salads, mm -hmm. in their green smoothies, because cilantro really helps to pull the toxins out of the liver. Really? And so, so if salsas, things like salsas that are actually really good for are you. Are really good for you. That's right. Nice. And you know, it's cherry season mm -hmm. and um, the black cherries are just wonderful to help detoxify the Those liver. Those are my favorite. And you can even just eat just cherries for a day and it will really help detoxify you. Yay. And get the the flow going. I d had no idea. That's that's fabulous. But um, 
there are other foods that help support the liver mm -hmm. and help it to do the detoxification easier, mm -hmm. like beets that we have here. Mm -hmm. uh, avocados they have glutathione which help the liver to detoxify wow. walnuts do um, and it's so great because these are some of my favorite things <laughs> I know and these are all foods that most people Yay. like I even tell people if they take and grate a whole beet mm -hmm. and add two teaspoons of black soil mm -hmm. and squeeze a whole lemon on it and mix it up yeah like uh, beet slaw oh, and yeah. um, if you just go in like once an hour and get a spoonful of that, mm -hmm. it, it tastes good and it really helps your liver. Oh, that's fabulous. I'm going to start doing that. Now, does the color of the beet matter? Um, I think that the the redder, the darker is always better. Better. So But purple, if you like are... to have a little different color, mm -hmm. they're all good and you can mix it together and make it pr prettier. Yay. And so that's good. Excellent. I know a lot of people don't like beets. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dan Fra Process knew that too. <laughs> and so they made um, up this product called AF Beta Food that has carrots and beets and. So carrots are good for the liver. Calcium as well. and magnesium that are, and nutritional yeast that are really good for the liver. Excellent. So if, like liverplex, so if, you're, if you don't have time to sit down or make the foods that are good for you or you just don't like the foods that are good for the liver, you can take supplements. You can take supplements. Mm -hmm. These are, and the standard process are whole food supplements, so they they have the, these kinds of things in them right. that will help your liver the same way this does. Excellent. And but you can't, like the other thing is too, what we just talked about though, if you don't eat organic or you eat things with lots of pesticides on it and you, you know, you're still drinking all the time and this, then you're kind of just keeping your steady state of the liver. That's right. So you kind of got to make a conscious choice to eat healthier and take better care and drink a lot of water in accordance with the supplements because the supplements alone aren't just going to make That's the drastic right. change. So that if you want to keep up your abusive lifestyle and mm -hmm. then you do this to, to fix that abusive lifestyle, your health is going to be just, just as it is. Just as it is, and it's not going to improve. Mm -hmm. But if you change how you eat, you eat organic, you eat the vegetables and fruits that have glutathione and sulfur in them, mm -hmm. you can look that up online. What foods have glutathione in them? What fruits and vegetables have sulfur in them? Mm -hmm. And you concentrate on eating those, then you're helping your system flow better, your liver, you're supporting your liver without taking supplements. So there are some flushes you can do that'll help to cleanse the liver. Let's start with the easy flush. <laughs> so often people are afraid to start with the big flush. Yeah. So I tell them if they just take a whole lemon mm -hmm. and cut it into quarters and pluck out the seeds, leave the peel on it. We're only cutting it in quarters so the blender can handle it better. Mm -hmm. Throw that in. A Vitamix works better, but it makes it smoother and creamier, mm -hmm. but you can use a regular blender. Mm -hmm. So it's a lemon with the skin on. With the skin on. No seeds. You can, yes, take the seeds out. Cut into quarters in the blender. Then two tablespoons of olive oil. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Extra virgin. <laughs> Extra Organic. Virgin. If Organic. You have it. <laughs> yep. And then a cup of water. Mm -hmm. um, and you blend it till it's smooth and creamy, mm -hmm. and it tastes good. Um, if you want a little extra kick to it mm -hmm. to fight off parasites, mm -hmm. you can throw in a clove or two of garlic. Oh, wow. Or you can put in a pinch of cayenne powder. Cool. And that'll or, give it a little... And it helps to eliminate parasites a little oh. bit. No. And you do that every morning. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Do you do it at night or do you do it in the morning? Or you do it every night. Okay, so but you have to be, you should be consistent. But be consistent. And then your liver will kind of get used to it and just start, start emptying the toxins. Correct. Okay. And it's just like little mini flushes mm -hmm. pushing it along. Right. And then if you change your diet, it's the same effect, you know, as taking supplements. It, it helps. So you're actually progressing and getting that's healthier. Right. If you get more magnesium, calcium, potassium, mm -hmm. 
more vitamin C and start getting the flow going and you start eating like 50% raw foods, mm -hmm. more fruits, more vegetables. Which means you're just not cooking them all the time. That's correct. Excellent. Wonderful. And now the Mac Daddy Flush. <laughs> this one I was, I did one about a year ago. And when did I start? Seven weeks ago now. I started one a week. That's right. Mm -hmm. so it took a little to, convincing. It did. I was, I'll tell you, I, I still get nervous every week. <laughs> so if you can just tell us a little bit about what that what goes into the, the big flush. So when you do the big flush, you start eating soft foods, fruits, vegetables for about 24 hours beforehand. Mm -hmm. And if you've been drinking lots of apple juice for the week before, mm -hmm. like drink a quart of apple juice a day, that mm -hmm. helps to soften the stones so that when the big flush happens, mm -hmm. the stones are soft enough they can move through the oh, So apple bladder. juice will help to soften stones in the liver? Because apple juice has malic acid. Okay. And so I tell them to make like smoothies and always put apples and juice daikon or eat cauliflower. The white vegetables and apples have softening agents, nice. acids, mm -hmm. where the greens have oxalic acid. Mm -hmm. And so if you combine softening foods with hardening foods, you get a balance. Excellent. And it helps to soften the stones in right. your liver. So, so the preparation would be the apple juice ahead of time and then 24 hours before just soft foods because the soft foods are going to help to digest better. They'll digest easier right. and, and be moving through easier. Okay. So then what? So on the day of the flesh, you, you eat your fruits in the morning, and then you um, you stop eating after 2 o'clock. You eat your walnuts, your avocados at 2 o'clock to mm -hmm. help give the glutathione to help the liver detox. Mm -hmm. And then you drink Epsom salt water at 5 and Epsom salt water at 7. That still gives me the, sh the shivers. It's and, Epsom salt mm -hmm. water, just to let you know, is not the best tasting of water drinks. <laughs> yeah, some people, they like the Epsom salt, and they don't like the oil. So each person is yeah. individual in their taste. Exactly. So and then so. after those, that goes on to four hours, and then... And then two hours later, you do the four to six ounces of oil and the juice of one grapefruit mm -hmm. and you shake it up in a glass jar mm -hmm. and drink it and then you lay mm -hmm. down in your bed and you try to go to sleep. Yep. And you lay on your right side so it can you absorb You can lay on your liver. right side for a half an hour but if you don't do that because you're mm -hmm. too tired and just roll over that's okay too. Okay. And one of the little tricks that I learned from doing mine if you blend it with just like a cube of ice makes a nice little frothy and it tastes like an orange Julius <laughs> or grapefruit Julius. That's right. So you can I don't do, mind that part. That's you can do good. that. Yeah. Most people like the oil drink much right. better than the Now Epsom these salt. are something you don't want to do without a Colima the next day and tell us why. <laughs> well when you are doing it the stones can move down and then get stuck in the gallbladder or in the turns and twists of the colon. Mm -hmm. And if you come in and do a clima, I massage you, I move the blockages around, mm -hmm. I run on the microcurrent, I dilate the gallbladder, I help move the stones down, I run softening stone currents, mm -hmm. and then the, I help you eliminate those or get them moving down right. better. Excellent. So, and for those of you that don't know what stones are, which I didn't until my girlfriend started doing her cleanses and I would see her yeah stones. she's like come look and I was like I'm not going to go look at your bathroom she's like come look and they're green and they float they don't sink it's actual stones that are created in the liver it's just bile floats. all the toxins yeah. yeah so we did a flush together and she has been doing it for what two years now? Two years. Two yes. years now. So she's at the towards the top of the liver, just constantly detoxing. And these are the stones that just came I, out. I am just in in shock. If you have a weak stomach, this is not the part of the program you want to watch right now. I'm giving you the warning. <laughs> so 
these are liver stones. And mine. Ooh, Most man. liver stones are yeah. like they're, they're half like little inch tiny. To they look like inch. green peas, like little tiny green peas. Is That's exactly right. what they little look green like. Little green peas, yeah. But as you do the cleanses and you get deeper and deeper and you get higher liver, in your liver, they're huge. I mean, I just can't. Gray get... thick ones come out. <laughs> I just can't get over that, man. Because I've been doing it forever, and two years ago I did one a week for 12 weeks, and then I did one a month for the next 24 months. And just recently, I had ones this big, but they were they were coal black that came out of wow. me. Wow, I'm just totally and in I'm, shock. You don't ever get those big ones until you've been cleansing for a while. For a while, and then that just opens everything up. You're flowing again. You're healthy, and your energy levels increase. And That's right. Once those yeah. big stones move out from up high, all of a sudden you get this burst of energy, and your whole rib cage starts flowing. You stop being locked up, and you have the energy that you did. When you were in your yeah. late twenties and thirties. Yeah, she definitely had energy today. We ended up hauling wood on the ranch. She's like, Come on, let's go. I was like, oh, That's geez. right. She's all clean and awesome. ready to go. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing with us and educating us. We really appreciate it. This was um yeah, my life's been changing for the last seven weeks. So well, that's hopefully. the reward for doing it all is yeah. is seeing how everybody's life starts coming back yeah. to them and they're able to do the things they want and still have energy to that's play. awesome. And, yeah, and just to let you know, too, you start easy. Your liver, it's your liver, it's your life. You start out easy if you don't have time to really get into a cleanse. We showed you the foods. We showed you the easy lemon drink water. But if you're really serious and you really want to detox, the cleanses or the, the, the flushes are the way to go. That's right. Definitely. And there, how about health repercussions? Are there any unhealthy aspects of the olive oil and the, the citrus? No, but sometimes people think they can just do it at home and not do the clean up. But what I, even if all the stones move through the gallbladder and are moving out and you see them in the toilet, a lot of it is still stuck and, mm -hmm. that, and it moves out slower. Mm -hmm. And the longer that the toxic mass is in your colon, mm -hmm. the more that you absorb into your bloodstream. Right. And so that's why it's so important to do the, if you do the colon hydrotherapy to, do the whole to get therapy. pull those toxins out before they get pulled. Because when you reabsorb toxins, they go mm -hmm. to your brain and your glands. Yep. And you don't want that. Right. And the thing with the toxins, too, are, I mean, we've all had fun lives and, you know, not so healthy lifestyles at some point. So when you first start your cleanse, the one thing I noticed, it, it felt like you were back there in those days, you know, because the toxins get released into your system. And it's not, it's not easy. It's, it's not. It's not an easy process. It's so like you you're hungover. It's easy flush, <laughs> hey, I'm going to do this and get healthy. It's work. So... You yeah, better you, be ready for it. <laughs> that's right. You can have symptoms like feeling like you have a hangover yeah, or that's what I did. you go on another high from a drug you took. Yeah. Or what happened to me once is anesthesia from having a baby got mm -hmm. released. And I I couldn't I couldn't function or talk. <laughs> Jeez. It was like your everything was asleep. We were Wow. So you you gotta be Careful. That's amazing. Well, thank you for sharing this with us today. I really appreciate it. It's great to and see you. And thank you for joining us. And I hope you learned a lot on this show. And we'll see you next time right here on The Holistic Half.